I have just horribly embarrassed myself by talking with a muted mic for a minute and a half. Who am I and what have I done? Uh, I am GM Jipper. I've been the GM for our Ever on Thursday night campaigns uh, here on Heroes and Hooligans for about half a year now. I am a player in our Grim Hollow campaign, Delirium, on Monday nights. Uh, and tonight I will be announcing a new game. Uh, or I suppose this afternoon for those of us who, you know, aren't in Great Britain. So the format we'll be going with here is just generalized Q&A. Feel free to ask a question through the comments here on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook. Uh, submit one in our Discord. Uh, if you somehow find my pager number, you could throw one through that. But, you know, I'm not sure it works anymore. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and get started here with a little bit of talk about creation and how I choose to go about that as a principle. Uh, whether it's creating a setting, creating characters for our players to come up against, or creating a player, player character for myself. Uh, I personally love to draw inspiration from a, a single emotion at first. Uh, that defines a relationship um, because stories are what we're here to tell and the greatest stories are those that are personal. Um, for instance, when when Huli and I were talking about developing Coca-Cola, uh, we talked about the relationship Coca-Cola has to each member of her family, uh, how she is driven by her relationship to her mother and to the house. Uh, and how, despite meeting the goals that were set for her, they weren't goals that were making her happy because this was not a happy relationship between Coca-Cola and her mother. Um, and that gave us this bit of development opportunity for Coca-Cola with, okay, there's another side of your family that you know, maybe they're a little warmer to you, maybe they're a little kinder, uh, and we're going to get to explore more and more of what the dynamic of the Iron Gut family is as time goes on, which I'm very excited to get into. Uh, I've gotten some uh, jokes before, I know, from both my fellow players and some of our audience about the obvious mommy issues that are uh, spread throughout Eberron. Uh, just want to say, Love my mom. Did You did get me therapy, so you know where it's coming from. Uh, oh, and we have our first question here. Let's see. So this is coming to us via Discord. Uh, as a as someone who plays D&D offline and online, what preparations do you undertake before going live compared to when you are running a game in person? Uh, so my preparations online and offline do have a lot of similarities. Um, I always make sure that I'm, you know, well fed before I go to something because, you know, food powers the brain, brain powers the story. Uh, if one's not working, everything falls apart. Uh, I'm a very dehydrated person by nature. Uh, so I've constantly got at least three liters of drink near me uh, while I'm playing. Uh, so that's a big prep for me. Uh, and then my prep as a DM differs uh, a lot depending on whether I'm online or offline. Offline, I write up a lot of these little booklets. Uh, let me go ahead and let's background off for a second so you can see these. Uh, I write up a lot of these little booklets that have character notes on them uh, in order to have connections and presuppositions about what the characters already formed. Uh, because people within the world will have those connections and presuppositions to them. 
uh, one of my favorite things to do, that I do for offline only, is I love to sit down with the with each player uh, just before, and uh, if I'm running a one shot, say, okay, what story do you want to tell quick, and is there anything you want to keep secret? Um, I don't do that for our online games because here we are telling a fully cooperative story. Uh, we are trying to work together, uh, and it is. You know, the story is no fun for the audience if half of it is hidden behind our screens. Uh, the players are learning and experiencing this story the same time as you. Uh, and we really, here at Heroes and Hooligans, buy into the audience being our last party member. Uh, we buy into that mechanically with healing and canceling crits with uh, audience or with channel points. Uh, and we really admire and adore the passion our audience shows in those big moments. Uh, let's talk, though, about concentricity. Uh, concentricity is a three and a half year project of mine, uh, and it is perhaps my favorite thing that I've ever prepped for a tabletop RPG. Uh, and I'm proud to say we will be running the first live concentricity setting game here on Heroes and Hooligans on Friday nights, beginning in April. Uh, so, what is concentricity? Uh, concentricity is perhaps best described as a sci-fi setting, a cyberpunk setting, uh, a homebrew setting, all in all. And we are currently developing a custom system for it. Uh, we will be playing our first season using Star Wars 5e, just to explore the world of it, uh, and flesh out how our players like to move within it. That way we can customize it to suit play style, uh, and just really go fully into things. But we'll go ahead and give our intro now. In a world cloaked in the shadows of towering megastructures, where the sun's rays are but a memory, and the boundaries between reality and the virtual world blur, a new adventure awaits. Welcome to Eden. A beacon of technological marvels and hidden agendas, where factions vie for power and control beneath the watchful gaze of the solar sphere. In the heart of this urban labyrinth, the Technoblock Consortium harnesses the power of innovation, while the Eco Harmony Collective seeks harmony with nature in the midst of concrete jungles. Deep below the glitzing lama, we find the Sovereign Syndicate offering refuge to those who dwell in the shadows, secrets and bought and sold as commodities. We see the heights of the solar towers of the Synarchy and the virtual realms of the Neural Nexus Guild, both hiding great secrets. A new chapter unfolds before us. Our adventurers will dare to defy the status quo. They may unravel the mysteries of Eden and shape its destiny. Join us and let the echoes of Eden go back. Uh, so we are going to get into how world creation works for me a little bit here. 
Uh, and we're going to get our first little peek behind the screen. Let's get this blown up. I'm so sorry. I am having some technical issues getting this on your screen, gang. <laughs> 